the Grand Lake debates. Power, bright ideas. Welcome to the 2023 edition of the Grand Lake debates. We are delighted to be back with you for another season. Please bear in mind that matches, topics, and positions are randomly selected. Also note that these debates are being done in an impromptu format. The students will be developing their arguments right here today. The theme for the preliminary round is independence and reparations. The areas of focus are economic development and reparations. I, Kunta Kinte Andal, your chairperson, and a proud former Grenick debater, call this house to order. We are pleased to bring you highlights of the preliminary round of matches. This match is between the Bishop's College and the Grenada SDA Comprehensive. The motion is, be it resolved that reparations are necessary to address historical injustice in the Caribbean. According to the Oxford Dictionary, the word reparation means the making of amends for a wrong one has done by paying money to or otherwise helping those who have been wrong. The term historical injustice refers to the past moral wrong committed by previously living people that has a long-lasting impact on the well-being of currently living people. With these definitions established, it is already clear that reparations are necessary to address historical injustice. Many post-colonial countries suffered under the yoke of colonialism. They endured exploitation, violence, forced labor, cultural suppression, and economic extraction by colonial powers. These effects are long-lasting. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. None but ourselves can free our minds. Not an apology, not restitution, and certainly not money. Esteemed judges, an example of historical injustice is slavery. The proposition may have you believe that reparation is necessary to address this historical injustice, but this is not the case. Firstly, slavery happened a long time ago, and no one currently living is responsible for what happened during this time, nor is anyone currently living a victim to slavery. So why should we be the ones responsible, responsible for administering reparation? And who would receive these reparations? Individuals who are victims to these historical injustices are not living, so how would reparations address these injustices? Secondly, slavery was legal, so there was no law prohibiting slavery. Therefore, slavery technically was not wrong. During colonial times, the economic exploitation abetted the historical justice already perpetuated. Whilst under the British rule, they have stolen our culture by removing and keeping our cultural artifacts. What's even more preposterous is their blatant disrespect and, and culture appropriation by displaying it in their museums. Statistics also show that over 27% of the world's languages are at risk of extinction, primarily in post-colonial countries. What does this say about the historical injustice committed against post-colonial countries? Again, the facts cannot lie. Slavery was legal for over 200 years. Not a decade worthy opponent. Two whole hundred years. Have you ever seen someone get paid for an action that was legal, that was just, that was right? Then, what, then on what basis are we seeking reparations? Aren't these numerous calls for reparations then at the whims and fancies of colonial powers? Pleading, imploring with the hope that the conscience of men will be awakened? Are we beggars? Is that what the traumatic experience of slavery has resorted us to? Opponents, demanding reparation is one thing, receiving it is the next. What are your opponents? If these historical injustices, such as slavery, happened such a long time ago and was legal, why should reparations be given? 
are the present governments of colonial powers not still tied to their past and still benefit from the advantages and privileges that historical injustice created? Well, the opponent, they are not directly responsible for what happened. But they benefited from what happened. And they still face the advantages, so they should pay back the repara reparations. Well, the opponent, necessary. coming back to what I just stated, let's say they do pay these reparations. It will be bringing up one's economy at the demise of another. My worthy opponents, when the slaves and their work was exploited and their resources were taken from them, who was considering their economy? What are worthy opponents? Remember, at this time, it was legal. It was. Was but it I, just? Was it just? It was legal, my worthy opponents. Was it just? My worthy opponents. Your second speaker noted that reparations are expensive, but are the effects of slavery and colonialism not great in value too? Use the money gained from colonialism and slavery to pay back these reparations. Okay, what your opponent? So, if you were to truly pay back these reparations to all the slaves, mm -hmm. as my second speaker stated, according to Black Blake Hanna, it will bankrupt the nation. What your opponent? My worthy opponents, as I also stated, how is this our concern? What the opponent? slaves that were taken and the labor that was exploited from them. Do you know what, my, my worthy opponents, are you familiar with reparative justice? We are. We are. Right. So, how is it that you claim that it is so difficult as to not even make an effort to try to bring some sort of reparation to these colonial countries? Well, your opponent, are you aware that there are countries that provide reparations to the victims and they had to suffer in the long run? For example, of Haiti, when they had to pay back their former ruler, France, it took them over a hundred years to pay back these reparations. Your first speaker um, sang about the mental slavery we are supposedly stuck in. With this logic, doesn't this further prove that the effects of colonialism still linger? But your opponent, it does. But if reparations are given, let's say, for example, reparation is given in the form of rehabilitation, it does not erase these mental slaveries, what your opponent, which will not right or address these historical wrongs in a satisfactory manner, what your opponent? My worthy opponent, did you not just state that your argument is flawed? Because you say you want no reparations, but you are giving examples of reparations that you are willing to give. So why can you not give reparations in financial aid? Slavery was a very long time ago, over 200 years, and it was abolished in 1934. So reparation, therefore, is not necessary. Your first speaker mentioned teaching the indigenous language. During slavery time, there was indigenous genocide. So how are we sourcing the indigenous people to teach others? My second speaker also mentioned that reparations will only be given the persons or countries receiving reparation a victim mentality. And this way of thinking will be a downfall of an economy. How can one stand against the moot when the fact stands so plainly as Caribbean countries who've been under colonial rule, do we not deserve reparations for all that we have dealt with and tolerated? Our artifacts and heritage stolen, wiped, our history wiped out and even twisted to the point where it is difficult and near impossible to discern reality from lies made up by the colonizers. Should we not at least have our artifacts reinstated? While slavery was a then, contrary to our no, as their first speaker stated, its effects remain obvious when one takes a look at Caribbean post-colonial countries, GDPs as opposed to the majority of other countries, or even looking at the erasure of culture and language. Is this not so? To further solidify my stance in support, yes, slavery was legally allowed, as your second speaker stated. However, it was morally wrong, a fact widely acknowledged.
What about mixed people who are born free, who are forcibly enslaved? Is slavery really right? Is it really just if it included free people? Do they not deserve reparation? If not financial aid, then at the very least, infrastructure development. Should we not, at the very least, reconciliate, especially as tourism-focused countries? Tell me, how is this right, much less just? With these facts stated, is reparation truly unnecessary? I rest my case. Thank you. And the winner is the Grenada SDA Comprehensive. This match is between the St. David's Catholic Secondary and Hillsborough Secondary. The motion is, be it resolved that Caribbean families rather than states receive compensation for slavery. I stand here today with a fervor that matches a thousand blazing suns. We are gathered here not to merely engage in a polite discussion, but to confront an issue that has been festered for far too long in the shadows of history. It is a matter of grave importance and needs all our attention. But the opponent, judges, I think this debate has one side. Without the families, there will be no state. The families are the ones to put in the labor, sweat, blood, and tears to build this economy. So worthy opponent, imagine going through this misery, and at the end of the day, the states are the ones to be compensated. I cannot even imagine this, because this is ridiculous. What about the compensation for economic exploitation? We feel entitled to reparations due to this, as a state. Economic exploitation, which according to IGLglobal.com, refers to forced labor in in traditional economic sectors, mostly in agriculture, into ILO documents. The economic development of European colonial powers were built on the backs of slaves. The reparative movement to states would be a huge step into righting the wrongs of the past. How do the British and the French have the audacity to attempt to interfere with the operation of our government systems? Finally, lack of historical data. As confirmed by Prilly Bicknell Hersko's reparation in the Caribbean and diaspora, there are significant limitations on historical data. This is minimal evidence that the contemporary persons of the Caribbean communities are descendants of the indigenous peoples. In giving reparative justice only to families, this is unfair and unjust. My worthy opponents, have a conscience. How can you say the state should receive compensation when it was the family that went through slavery, the family that had to go through the pain and turmoil of clearing somebody else's land, losing their son without any compensation? I find it to be absolutely preposterous that we sit here and say that state should get money when they have done nothing. Were the opponent, why should the families of these victims be compensated for something that happened before they were even born? If the states are compensated, the economy of each state can develop to foster a stable environment for the families of the victims. Among these states is Grenada. Grenada was affected by the transatlantic slave trade. Honorable Chair, we need to receive back some of the wealth so that we can aim to repair the harm done to our economy. Worthy the opponent, the human resource of Grenada used for the development of another country, thanks to the abolishment of slavery in 1834, freeing over 23,600 slaves in Grenada. We must be repaid for the historical injustices we suffered during these times when King Sugar was sugaring and Europe's economy was developing. Worthy opponents, why do you think the family should receive compensation? We believe that the family should receive compensation based on the history of unfair usage that the government is accustomed to. Are you aware that there is a lack of historical data to back up these facts, worthy opponents? Can you repeat the question? 
Next question, please. Do you have any credible source for stating this? Observation based on the Caribbean countries, Grenada specifically. Are you aware that the motion states not Grenada, but specifically Caribbean Grenada countries? countries? Well, the opponent, by specifying that it is Grenada, you are actually disregarding other Caribbean countries, saying that they are less important, well, the opponent. We will move on to the next question. And how can we assure that families do not take advantage of reparations? How can we take advantage of something that was rightfully ours? Well, the opponent, there may be specific reasons and specific causes that would assist due to reparation. Next question. Did you know of the Antigua and Barbuda rep reparations? Are you aware that the World Trade Organization made a reparation to Antigua due to trade commitments being destroyed by the United States? That is an example, were the opponents, that reparations can help if they are given to the state, not only the families. Do you have evidence of the reparation helping Antigua and Bermuda? Yes, yes were the opponents. They use the reparations for various reasons, such as building the Antigua US commitment trade. Trade commitment. My esteemed opponents, if the state receives the compensation, in what way can they help families that are living in poverty? They could actually contribute to building better institutions such as the healthcare and better education systems. How would the compensation share to benefit both state and families? It all depends on the amount given to us, were the opponents. If we are given an amount to suffice both the needs of the state and the families, then there should be no issue. But my worthy opponents, amongst what not discussed in the moot? Well, this is a contributing factor to the moot, even though it is not particularly stated inside of it. If the state receives compensation, in which way would this reverse the effects that slavery had instilled upon the families? The simple apology and acknowledgement can take a huge effect on the state and the families that participated in the transatlantic slave trade. Are you saying sorry is enough to sorry is enough to reverse the effects of 200 years of slavery? I am not. Here we stand today. Steadfast with solid facts being our aid, unwavering as we are sure with our accurate sources, and unyielding as we know we only speak the truth. Therefore, the motion be it resolved that Caribbean families, rather than states, receive compensation for slavery is hostile. Fellow opponents, your first speaker stated that the people who fought in revolution shed sweat. Be for you. Aren't these the same people that came from families? Hmm. Your first speaker also stated that giving reparation is unfair and unjust. My worthy opponent, how? How can you stand here today and say this? I feel hurt. Are you telling me that I should work hard day and night and not be rewarded or contemplated for it? Our very own Prime Minister, Honorable Deacon Mitchell, stated that slavery was a crime against humanity. He also stated that families that went through slavery should be compensated. He never once said that the state should be compensated. If this is the case, this is biasness. And opponents, trust me, the Apollo is worse than the thief. With that said, I rest my case. Thank you. And the winner is Hillsborough Secondary. This match is contested between the Presentation Brothers College and Happy Hill Secondary. The motion is, be it resolved that reparations lead to dependence rather than self-empowerment. The CARICOM 10-point and economical development plan that is building Lagos cases as to why we should get reparation, one of which is called public health crisis, that is the improvement of the health sectors in the Caribbean. 
This would significantly improve our economy. Depending on it would definitely lessen our chances of needing self-improvement. How exactly do reparations lead to dependence? Are we not already an independent country? Why would receiving reparations change that? Why else we have to go back to our old ways after so many years of fighting for what we deserve? Today, we have our own national anthem, in which in the second line, it said that we pledge ourselves to thee, no one else but ourselves. We have our own pledge, our own coat of arms, and our own flags. Are those not the characteristics of a country independent of anyone else? Reparations leading to dependence is quite a preposterous statement. We as a country would be dependent on reparations given that it isn't about dependency, but the compensation that is given. The reparations are not just about dependency. It's about giving back what is owed to us for our ancestors' hard work. England was built on the backs of slaves. They were dependent on our labor. It is only fair that we get reparations because it is what we're working towards to help our self-empowerment as well as our country. Like Queen Mother Moore said, open quotation, we should have a better living for our children and our children's children. We must fix history, close quotation. Wouldn't you want to depend on reparations to give your generations a better living? Now, that's definitely self-empowerment. Reparation makes a country better. It self-empowers a country. Reparations are only there to help a country thrive. And I'm confident that a dependent country and one that strives can be considered as complete opposites. Look at Israel before reparations to know. Mr. Chair, can you today consider Israel as a dependent country? Absolutely not. Instead, Israel self-empowered themselves through reparations, and today they are not dependent. Reparations can in turn to help aid our self-empowerment. Just, th just think of the things that we did without reparations. We built stadiums, airports. What do you think we can do with reparations? We could help better our tourism sector, help build better roads, and maybe one day even have a football stadium. During slavery, slaves depended on their master for food. If the master did not feed them, they would starve. Is that what you intend for reparations to be like? Where if we don't receive them, our economy will die? That is the wrong of it. Therefore, we would have stated that reparations is making the amends for the wrong. Therefore, we are asking that they make amends for the wrong because our ancestors would have suffered and for hunger, they would not have been given food. Is that what you're saying? No, we are saying that in today's day and age, we can find other ways to advance our economy. According to your, second, your first speaker, we are independent. Yes, we may be independent, but that doesn't put the point to that. Our forefathers, we were, went through the slavery. We are taking back what we are made. Are, so aren't we dependent on what we are uh, already made as black people? Um, the term reparations, as you find by Cambridge Dictionary, is payment for harm or damage. And we are not asking for reparations to develop our economy, but just as a means of compensating those affected by the transatlantic slavery and chattel slavery to create a means of saying sorry and developing the countries in the Caribbean for said actions done in the past. What is the means of asking for reparation if it's not to use to be developing our economy then? The means for reparation, as I said, is to compensate and say sorry, as defined as a first point in the CARICOM Reparations Commission's 10-point plan. But the 10-point plan also states 
one of which is technology transfer. This would also improve our education system as well our, as well as our healthcare system, wouldn't it? Boost our economy. It would boost our economy. Exactly my point. But with or without it, wouldn't our economy our economy would still grow? But it won't grow at the boost and what they will be having and enjoying. Anyways, let's move on. As your mm-hmm. second speaker stated, we build stadiums. How are you so sure that the money used to build these buildings are all made from our investment, cool. are also dependent on another country's charity? In fact, if we are truly independent, truly independent, that is, capable of doing things on our own, shouldn't the Molinier Road be fixed up and running since we are independent? What is taking so long? Why do you think I will be able to answer that given the fact? <laughs> because in fact, your second speaker stated that we're independent and we would have built... The first speaker of the opposition had stated that we should demand on reparations. Yet, reparations could never reverse the independence that our forefathers and mothers risked their lives for, died for, not only here, but around the world. We will in no way become dependent on the reparations given to us, neither on the people who gave it to us. The second speaker stated that we deserve reparations. According to the United Nations, slavery is the most heinous crime and tragedy against humanity. Yes, we deserve reparations, but we do not need to depend on them. Just like the Jewish in Israel have empowered themselves, we can and any other country can too. Honorable judges, the POI the POI speaker said that the Molinaire Road has nothing that has yet to been fixed. But that has nothing to do with reparations nor dependency. It was a natural occurrence that we have tried multiple times to fix, and it just couldn't. Today, our opponents have presented a fallacious argument that we strongly wish to refute. Their first speaker stated that we will go back to our old ways if we depend on reparations. But wouldn't these reparations only be used to boost the health sector, our economy, and now, as they suggest, our stadiums and airports? They couldn't even afford to fix the Molinier Road. When was this road ever attempted to be fixed? We will depend on reparations, not only to boost our economy, but to also pay back the debt that we were left in when we gained our independence. And the winner is Presentation Brothers College. This match is between the J.W. Fletcher Catholic Secondary and the Anglican High School. The motion is Be it resolved that slavery is responsible for the high incidences of diabetes and hypertension in the Caribbean. The following definitions are according to the Oxford English Dictionary. Slavery is the practice of owning slaves. Responsible is being the cause of something and so able to be blamed or credited for it. Diabetes is a disorder of the metabolism in which a lack of the hormone insulin results in a failure to absorb sugar and starch properly. Hypertension is abnormally high blood pressure, which has been prolonged. Esteemed judges, bring your minds back to the horrifying days of slavery. No freedom of choice. Our lives, property. The foods we were given to eat were not even given, but was the rejects, leftovers, and scraps of the Europeans. We had no other option than the rice and beans that were repeatedly given to us to the point where it became excessive amounts of this food, being unhealthy. The unhealthy eating habits causing us to develop diabetes and hypertension. Judges, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that these diseases 
are not contagious, they are hereditary. These diseases passed on through generations, genes. We were not given a choice, and this has led to our suffering. Honorable Chair, not only was it passed down through generations, but look at our very culture. The unhealthy foods and eating habits has forced its way into every aspect of our lives. Our culture, look at our very own national dish, oil down. According to the chairman of the Caribbean Reparations Committee, he said this was inspired by the meals given to us as slaves. Dear audience, I'm sure you're aware of the horrible and inconsiderate treatment we were given. Our only purpose was to be alive to work. The only thing considered when given us food was simply, which is the cheapest? which would give them enough energy to be present in the fields working them? The answer to this was carbs and fats. These food groups provide energy, glucose. So this is what we had to eat. My team and I argue affirmatively that slavery is indeed responsible for the high incidence of diabetes and hypertension in the Caribbean. Do you enjoy a nice cool Coca-Cola on a hot day? Especially in this heat, do you enjoy a nice cool beer, a nice cool drink to soothe your spirits, to soothe your body, to feel relaxed? The provision and salt fish that your good grandmother cooked for you the last time you went to visit her, did you enjoy that meal? Did it see it your stomach? Did you feel refreshed? Did you feel full? Did you feel satisfied? from that provision and selfish? Well, do you know that in the coke that you drank on that hot day, and in the selfish and provision that you ate by your grandmother, one in the coke, you, you took in a lot of sugar, and in the selfish, you took a lot of sodium. These things directly cause diabetes to become or prevalent. It is not because of slavery, but because of our decision that lead to the high incidences of diabetes in the Caribbean. My opponents, we are eating ourselves to death. Instead of blaming everybody, instead of blaming slavery, we should address the fact that we in the Caribbean eat and drink too much foods which lead to diabetes in the Caribbean. Cut down on the coke. Cut down on the provision and selfish. Cut down on the processed foods that you love so much that comes from other countries. And we in the Caribbean will see a much greater decrease. And I say it clearly and I say it now. We will see a much greater decrease in the amount of incidence in relation to diabetes in the Caribbean. The diets of our ancestors, slaves, were made up of scraps from the slave master's tables. Carbohydrates, fats, and anything that was unwanted. This was the only food slaves were exposed to. We had no options for fresh fruits and vegetables on a regular basis, especially if you were on a British plantation. If you stole fresh fruits, you were beaten or killed. Not only did the scraps barely keep us alive, it, was caused, it caused us to develop diabetes and hypertension because of the high salt and sugar content in our meals. Diseases like high blood pressure and diabetes is hereditary, meaning it is passed down from generation to generation. We as descendants of slaves in the Caribbean are at high risk for contracting these diseases from our forefathers. Our culture is one of enjoying ourselves and eating a lot. And many of our foods are inspired from our past. We in the Caribbean love salt foods and sweets salt fish, mackerel, smoked herring, oil down. Oil down was a common dish of our enslaved ancestors. It was made from the salty, fatty scrap meats from our master's table and carbohydrates that were cheap. Have you ever met a Grenadian who doesn't like oil down? I think not. Every year for our Independence Day celebrations, we eat this fatty, salty, carb-filled meal. We are bound to suffer with diabetes and hypertension. Do you know the price of rice and flour, yam and cassava? It's quite cheap. 
and I'm sure it was cheap then. Plantation owners did not want to spend money on their slaves. We developed a taste and love for those foods, and today they are still one, they are still a large part of every meal. Permit me to stand on protocol already established. Good morning. I strongly agree with my first speaker when he opposed on the moot. Be it resolved that slavery is responsible for the high incidence of diabetes and hypertension in the Caribbean. Not everyone that has slavery, slave ancestry has diabetes and hypertension. How can we determine that slavery caused, di caused diabetes and hypertension in the generation when we are the ones eating ourselves to death and all the sodium chloride we are intaking in our diet? There are so many things to eat. Why are we choosing to blame these diseases on something that happened over 160 years ago. My worthy opponent, do you believe that processed foods are healthy? No. So then do you believe that the, the foods from back in the slave times were the only um, factor that has to do with hypertension and diabetes today? Can you repeat the question? Do you believe that food from 160 years ago that were given to our ancestors contributes has the is the biggest factor that contributes to hypertension and diabetes today yes why is that because of the diets we had we were exposed to an excessive amount of these foods making it unhealthy which um opened the risk of getting diabetes or hypertension, and these diseases are hereditary. So this means that it passed down from generation to generation. So even though it was years back, this only furthermore proves that it indeed was passed down through generations to this present day, from since back then to now. And we st it is still here now, and it is still very prevalent. My opponent, do you believe in freedom of choice? Yes. Then why is it? Why are we blaming something that happened 160 years ago? Even if it is passed down, passed down from generation to generation, there are many ways that we can stop these things from occurring. Back then, were we given that freedom of choice to choose? Were we? No, but we are free now, and we can choose now. But it is hereditary, which means that it passed down from the times that we did not have freedom of choice. Is type 2, be is type two diabetes hereditary? No. Isn't it true that most of the diabetes that is occurring today is type 2 diabetes? We cannot provide an answer. What empirical evidence do you have to support your argument that diabetes and hypertension was not um, caused by slavery? My worthy opponent, check the www. Who? We'd like you to respond to this question. Your first speaker spoke of our grandmothers cooking for us provision and saltfish. Weren't these same foods, the carbs from the provision, the salt from the saltfish, these same foods, were they not the foods that we had to eat during slavery? Yes, but they were prepared differently. We were still given them to eat though. Also, the fact that our parents and grandparents still cook this for us, does this not indicate that it has now infiltrated our culture and has become a part of it? Is diabetes and hypertension not hereditary? It Only depends on which type of diabetes you are speaking of. Right. Yes or no. Is diabetes and hypertension not hereditary? Not in all cases. Then how were these 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 diseases inherited if not from slavery they could have been inherited otherwise like can we have an example i know of people who have no trace of diabetes in their family however their lifestyle choices in this generation have changed that and then they have developed not diabetes then it was not inherited that those are lifestyle choices that is not being inherited. So, does this not mean that it was passed down through the generations? 
Yes, but not always from slavery. Not everyone eats junk and drinks sodas and have extremely healthy diets and still suffer from diabetes and hypertension. Why? Those could be more recent cases of diabetes that have been brought into their family. Like parents, it doesn't have to span from 160 years ago. The question said that there is no trace of it from their family. The opposition has made some erroneous statements which cannot be left to stand. Their first speaker stated that we brought this upon ourselves. Our ancestors did not have a choice. They were given the scraps of the Europeans with no other options. They also gave an example of provision and saltfish. Saltfish itself came from slavery. The Europeans gave this to us to provide us with energy to work on their plantations. The second speaker stated that the slaves had a choice in the, in the crops that they grew. The slaves were beaten and killed for doing the incorrect things. How can they have a choice in the crops that they grow? They also stated that the slaves had a choice to eat the food or not. Humans must eat. Without food, your body would not be able to function properly. They also stated that slavery had happened 160 years ago. This proves that these diets and diseases were passed down for generation to generation. For those who make healthy lifestyle choices and still suffer from these diseases, what about them? Does it not prove that this was passed down? And the winner is the Anglican High School. This match is contested between Westmoreland Secondary and St. Mark's Secondary. The motion is, be it resolved that the creative industries should be the main contributors to Grenada's economic development. Creative industries would be major to Grenada's economic development by assisting the reduction of unemployment. Creative industries would provide job opportunities and allow for Grenada's unemployment rate to decrease. According to GrenadaEmbassyUSA.org, Grenada's unemployment rate stands at 12.5%. Creative industries in Grenada will allow for growth and allow for job variety. Debt payment. Grenada currently stands in major debt. According to the GrenadaEmbassyUSA.org, Grenada debt stands at $347 million. What is my point, you may ask? Creative industries will help with the monetary to Grenada's economic development, allowing for debt to be cleared slowly but surely. According to former minister Oliver Joseph, Grenada holds the 68th position in the 909 countries of the UN for economic development. Though we have a good position, creative industries would further help bring our position to a higher stance. Grenada is very limited on resources, so creative industries will be beneficial for us for a sustainable economy. Without the burdens of debt, Grenada would benefit majorly, allowing for a lot of economic development. Examples being creating more jobs and job variety, keeping businesses and making new ones, a better quality of life, productive use of property, mark and selling of local products, which creative industries talk speak a lot to. The creative industry comprises of all the performing arts and culture based on activities, for example, steel pan, drum, and calypso. This being said, we, the opposition team, stand firm against the moot. And, there are, and here is why. There would be lack of development in other areas of the economy. Also, the economy would, be, would, on, would only be boosted during certain times of the year. If we have the help of creative industries, it would assist in the reduction of debt in, that our country owes. Continuing on from that point, if everyone is relieved of this stress, it will promote an, a healthier economy and reduce unemployment in, in the creative industries. 
I would also like to point out that according to the former Minister of Trade, Minister Oliver Joseph, has shared with us just how the COVID-19 pandemic posed unparalleled challenges for Grenada and other Caribbean countries such as Guyana, Jamaica, and Barbados by creating microeconomic instability that threatened to undermine years of constructive socioeconomic progress since 2013. The government's main revenue earners, tourism, and international education were severely impacted and continue to struggle amidst the efforts to revive the economy. COVID-19 may have destroyed Grenada's economy, and it could have been helped by, by the creative industries. However, COVID-19 COVID has also been promoting creative industries because of the human resources that were increasing daily because people were trying their hardest to earn back money due to the unemployment in creative ways. And we continue to see a result of this every day. If there is a main focus on the creative industries, what really happens to the other industries? Really and truly, nothing else. They would not be developed upon. And then you would have only one main focus and no variety within that country. So when you take in tourism, for instance, tourists would come here during one time, and then every other time they come back, they would get bored. Further on the second point. The economy would only be boosted during certain times of the year. So in Grenada, we only have two main periods in which we develop our country economically through tourism. Firstly, it would be car carnival, and second point would be during independence. So during independence, you would only have them coming here. So what happens to the other points of time throughout the year? What happens? Nothing happens, really and truly. What job opportunities would the creative industry provide? Um, like job opportunities for people who want to sell spices in the market. That could be a job opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, working in factories that produce chocolate and, and nutmeg. The, well, the refining process of nutmeg. Such as the, such as the nutmeg factory. Okay. Okay. Next. In what ways would the creative industries help repay debt? Um, the creative industries will help repay debt by providing money. So the money that the creative industries make will go to paying the debt. Okay. How would the creative industry impact Grenada if there was no outside communication and trade? The creative industry is our own stuff. We make our things and even though, even if there's no contact from the outside, we can use our resources to build our economy. Thank you. In your words, what is the creative industry comprised of? My worthy opponent, as you stated earlier, as you stated earlier, uh, you thought the creative industry only includes dance, music, and arts. Even though I think that the creative industries includes way more than that, such as technologically technological stuff and more than just arts and crafts. Thank you. Why should a creative industry be used instead of other industries, for example, the agriculture industry, for generating revenue? My worthy opponent, according to the move, we wasn't speaking about any other industries except creative industries. How would the creative industry increase the ranking in economic development of Grenada? My worthy opponent, the creative industries was used to boost the economic development. Thank you. Thank you. Your first speaker proclaimed that creative um, industries come seasonal. Justify why this was said. Okay, so you know that Grenada basically depends on tourism. And tourism is in influenced by certain events, such as independence. On Independence Day, more people from overseas will more come to see the culture, what it have in the country. But during those other days in the year, say for example, during March, April, where you don't really have much activity. My worthy opponent, do you think that Grenada only has those things to offer? You speak of that tourism, tourism only tourism and all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Grenada has other things to offer just not except carnival and arts and crafts and all those kind of things yes we do yes we do know that it has other um parts but directly the mean okay we'll now be asking our next question 
Um, your first speaker stated that tourists will be bored when coming back to Grenada. Do you believe that Grenada has nothing else to offer? Yes, we do believe that, but the main thing... So why did you state that? We believe that, but we stated that because the only main thing most tourists come for here for is for Carnival and the independence. Nothing else, really. They said that to invite um, unemployed, to combat unemployment, sorry, they would um, employ persons in chocolate factories and so forth. But how many chocolate factories really are there in Grenada? And how much people can it really employ? Think about it. Grenada does not really have any factories. So, well, anything that could be considered a factory. Last time I checked, I opened a Conkles pack, to be plain, imported from Trinidad and Tobago, imported from Jamaica, imported from Puerto Rico. But they said they would rely on the persons inside of their country to buy their spices and whatever they create. How much can 100,000 people buy? Lastly, they talked about technological stuff. That was not clearly stated. What technological stuff does Grenada actually have, my worthy opponents? They have no factories. How will they create such? Our team has observed a flaw in our worthy opponents' words. While it may be the case that creative industry seems seasonal, not all creative industries are seasonal. For example, in the factory production industry, throughout the year, nutmeg production and chocolate production are done, providing not just for the tourists, but also for locals. This therefore allows for economic growth and development throughout the year. For this reason, we unreservedly support the move that creative industries should be main contributors to Grenada's economic development. I rest my case. Thank you. And the winner is Westmoreland Secondary. Thank you for joining us. Please tune in for complete coverage of the next round of competition, the round of 16, on the theme, Education. The Grenlec debates. Power, bright ideas.